How's it going guys? It is 5.24 a.m. 18th of March, Saturday here in Japan. We have a past level question for pediatrics for 2CK. If you're studying for step one, you're obviously going to have to ace the 2CK eventually. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. Really appreciate it. Give it a like. Really appreciate it. I mean, Instagram, element underscore medical, MHL, man underscore medical. Links down below for me. Telegram links to the Telegram group channel down below. Let's start the clip. Previously healthy, 13 month old boy brought to emergency one hour after acute onset wheezing. Parents say they had guests over at the house and he was crawling on the floor beside the table when it started. On arrival, he's in respiratory distress. He's tachycardic. Blood pressure is stable. Chest x ray shows atelectasis in the left upper lobe with the left side of tracheal shift. Atelectasis means lung collapse. So what you're going to have is a compression or obstruction of some kind and then collapse of the lung distal to that segment. Question wants to know which of the following is most appropriate next step in diagnosis. Let's just whip the answer choices here. We'll go backwards. Choice E, video guided thoracentesis. Wrong fucking answer. Never seen this as an answer in US Millie. Just decided to write this, write this here as a flagrant asshole. Okay, so one uh, factoid I can give you, however, and this is going to sound very fucking weird and specific, is that thoracentesis is an answer on one of the surgery forms for a procedure that is acceptable to do in hospice patients. So the two requirements for hospice, number one, must be terminally ill within six months. Number two, must not be undergoing any life prolonging management such as chemo, radiotherapy, dialysis, uh, or receiving antibiotics as examples. So thoracentesis is not considered life prolonging. It can mitigate symptoms of patients who have pleural effusions, okay? Shows up on the NBME assessment, as I said. In this case, wrong fucking answer. Choice D, upper GI series, wrong fucking answer. So this is going to be a barium swallow with x-rays. So you're going to visualize the anatomy of the upper GI tract. And you need to know this is the answer on USMLE for a kid who has congenital midgut volvulus. In fact, I shouldn't word it like that because they're going to do the opposite. This is what's going to go down. They're going to give you a big fucking paragraph in peds. You're going to have no idea what's going on. You're going to say, I don't know if this is intussusception, congenital midgut volvulus, duodenal atresia, etc. Just not really sure. And then the last line, they're going to say, diagnosis is made using upper GI series or an upper GI series is performed. And you're going to say, oh, I've heard that that's what we do for congenital midgut volvulus. And then the answer is just going to be failure of rotation of proximal bowel. Okay. They can also show you an image that looks like a corkscrew that's supposed to be your upper GI series showing the uh, congenital midgut volvulus, failed rotation of proximal bowel. In this case, wrong fucking answer. Choice C, esophageal gastroduanoscopy, wrong fucking answer. So EGD, aka just upper endoscopy. Very rare answer choice for anything pediatric, okay? I mean, Maybe a kid swallowed a battery as an example. I mean, I don't think I've seen this on pediatric forms. Uh, nothing off the top of my head that I can recall. And it doesn't apply in this case. I'll explain as we continue to move through the answer choices. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, CT of the chest, wrong answer. So very audacious to consider radiation dose like this in pediatrics. Almost never uh, do we do CT in kids. However, one exception I can comment on that shows up on one of the, uh, actually two I can think of. Uh, there's one on a PEDS form where they say a kid has blunt force trauma to the abdomen. He bumped into the corner of a table and then has some sort of uh, expanding mass in the abdomen. You have to do a CT looking for hematoma slash traumatic pancreatitis. Very fucking weird question, but it's on one of the new PEDS forms. Another example is going to be a kid who has uh, malignant otitis media, which means it extends to the mastoid bone causing mastoiditis. You have to do the answer on the NBME assessment is CT of temporal bone in a two year old. Sounds incredibly fucking wrong. Okay, doing CT. Uh, of the head in a kid radiation dose like that, but you need to visualize with either CT or MRI of the temporal bone, x-ray is insufficient. You need to visualize potential fluid collection because if that is present and it's not drained, it can lead to brain abscess, okay? Wrong fucking answer. Choice A, bronchoscopy, correct answer, aka fiber optic examination of the airways is another way they can write this for foreign body aspiration. Now, we made this easy. This is one of the ways they'll, I said this was past level, okay? So we say, OMG, he's crawling around on the floor, okay? So this makes it easier. Sometimes they omit this sentence, so you can't rely on it as a crutch. What they're going to do 
two things they can say as far as findings. They're going to say the kid has acute distress. That's going to be in both vignettes. But one of the findings will be this, where they say chest x-ray shows atelectasis in one of the lung segments, okay, with a ipsilateral tracheal shift. Call it weird all you want, not in my opinion. This is on one of the NBMA assessments. The other vignette is, in addition to their respiratory distress, they'll just say there is hyper-resonance of one of the lungs. Okay, so even though atelectasis would be dullness in that area that's cut off, uh, another vignette I've seen is, is a hyper-resonance on one side, okay, in a kid who's crawling around here, but they don't have to say he's crawling around. And they, as I already mentioned, rather than bronchoscopy, they can just have fiber optic examination of the airways. So this is an important differential you need to be aware of in pediatrics. And uh, in my PATH PDF, which I'll put out uh, probably by the end of April, uh, I mentioned this type of stuff in there as well. You know the deal, I'm going to continue to make more content if you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.